on Asia Down Under give a big hand for our own entertainment magazine. The celebrated musical Miss Saigon hits our shores. It's Music Month and this week we meet Atlanta Fall. And the scientist who's a champion at the art of teas. Kia ora and welcome to Asia Down Under. Today music, dance, circus and the stage are all part of our show. But first, the world of TV. Tonight, the grand finals of MasterChef takes place and the two Asian contestants have been giving it all they've got. One of those contestants stands a good chance of making it to the top. Here's Pushpa Jabin with that story. Things have been heating up in the kitchen on New Zealand's second season of the internationally renowned cooking show, MasterChef. This year, two of the contestants, Michael Lee and Nadia Lim, are bringing a little bit of Asia to the show. I would say it was a lot of fun, especially the challenges where we were cooking, because just so much fun to have as many ingredients as you like and um, to really challenge yourself in a cook-off. But um, there were quite a few stressful times, but overall just an incredible experience and I feel really lucky to have gone through it. A dietitian by trade, Nadia has always been passionate about food. I've loved food from day one, but um, I'd say when I was about 13 years old, about third form at school, um, I saw Jamie Oliver on The Naked Chef, and I just thought, I thought, he's, he's awesome, he's really cool, and I want to be like him. With a Malaysian background, Nadia's heritage has also been an influence on her cooking. Yeah, I was born in New Zealand, Auckland. Uh, Mum's a Kiwi and Dad is Chinese, but grew up in Malaysia. He was born in Malaysia. And when I was six years old, we moved back over there. And I don't follow recipes and I don't really cook traditional food, but I like usually using quite traditional flavours, um, like some of the Malaysian flavours, like maybe tamarind or blachan or um, you know coconut cream, those types of things. And then just mixing it with other produce that you would find abundant in New Zealand. And it's been her early exposure to all things culinary that has allowed her to face the extreme pressure of cooking in a MasterChef kitchen. There is definitely quite a lot of pressure, but what I found was quite interesting. Um, I would be very stressed out and really worried all before the challenges, but as soon as I got into the kitchen, as soon as like I started chopping the food or something, suddenly I'd be very calm and the pressure just kind of left me and I just started having a lot of fun. Michael Lee, the youngest contestant on the show, also felt the heat. Uh, it's not really very good. The MasterChef experience was just a complete up and down journey. And it was just cliched, but it was a roller coaster ride. Um, the most important thing was once it got really bad and you're just down in the dump, you've got to focus on the highs. Even at the young age of 17, Korean-born Michael's international background, combined with a love of food, meant that he was able to hold his own. My personal background is a huge influence to what I cook and how I cook. Um, it also helps that my dad was a businessman and he travelled around you know, the whole entire world for 20 or so odd years um, doing his business. So he would come back with different flavours and recipes from different countries and that kind of excited me, you know, different ingredients like saffron and cardamom, which you could never get in New Zealand back then. In the first episode, Michael's entry dish of braised pork won him the golden apron. Winning the golden apron meant that the judges had some kind of standard, a yardstick to compare you on for the rest of the dishes that uh, um, you cook in the series, so it's really hard knowing that pressure of trying to make food that is the same standard as my golden apron dish. And then came the inevitable elimination. It's time for you to leave the MasterChef kitchen. Cool, thank you guys so much. It was a relief um, at the time that I got eliminated actually, which sounds really weird, but it was just so stressful and I'd been in the house for so long, it just, just wanted to get out to be honest. From the pressures of the MasterChef house to the heat of a commercial kitchen. Michael is currently honing his culinary skills under renowned chef Paul Jobin at Sky City. He shows great promise and with him he gets bored really easily. So what's really, really important is to make sure that my chefs are keeping him busy, letting him learn new technique, not letting him work in one section of the kitchen too long, moving him around. I think he'll do exceptionally well. 
Meanwhile, back in the MasterChef kitchen. Nadia, congratulations, you're in the top two. As one of the last two contestants to make it to the end, Nadia's future hinges on the outcome of tonight's MasterChef final. It was amazing uh, to think that we were in the final two. Um, yeah, quite surreal, quite a surreal feeling, I think. Uh, when I first entered, I never even thought I'd get an interview, so to get that far, I was just blown away. And I thought, since I've made it this far, I've got to go all the way and make sure I get it done and win it. Even the judges are gearing up for the big finale. Great fun, great fun. I really enjoyed the judging. Just to be involved in their passion, to see their passion. And, you know, I've said it a hundred times, but they, they put their heart on a plate and then we dissect it, which you never like doing much. But they're such passionate people and they want it so bad. It's just inspiring to be around and you learn from them. So, does Nadia win? Tune in to find out in tonight's MasterChef final.